Hey guys, Bridget here. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, page and element triggers in uh, Webflow. Now, this is an extract of my upcoming course uh, on uh, Webflow, which is going to be released uh, within the next month. Uh, but now, without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So let's learn about the element triggers uh, within a live application uh, in uh, my personal website. Uh, I have this uh, landing page for the framework course. And uh, what I want to do is to add a cursor over here, which uh, is going to be interactively animated so that uh, it's going to go around uh, the page uh, when uh, it's uh, going to be on view. So what I did uh, is uh, I simply added uh, a image which I'm going to drag and drop uh, and you can follow along with this tutorial by simply adding uh, an image uh, within a container or even an element uh, of uh, any sorts uh, since uh, the principle is going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to make it uh, uh, around this size and what I notice is that this uh, image is going to basically overlap and bring uh, the image cover down below. So I simply want uh, to uh, adjust uh, the positioning uh, to absolute uh, so that uh, it's uh, going to be on top and uh, not uh, disrupt uh, the document flow. Now that I made this quick adjustment, let's head up uh, on uh, the interactions panel and uh, we're going to select the element trigger. Now, as you recall, the element trigger is going to be a uh, element specific animation. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on plus and here we have a few different options. Mouse click means that uh, once I tap on it, it's going to trigger, but this is not what I want. Not even the mouse hover, which is going to be when I hover over this section, and uh, not even the mouse move over element. What I want is scrolling to view, since uh, scrolling to view essentially tells Webflow, hey, Whenever the user is in uh, this uh, section, so scrolled into this view, the animation is going to be triggered. And uh, I'm going to do just that. And uh, we're going to keep uh, the trigger settings for all of uh, the responsive sizes, so desktop and above, tablet, phone and phone portrait for the moment then we can uh, have a look at the responsiveness uh, later on, but that is going to be just incremental and uh, small adjustments, which we're not going to focus on much in uh, this video since uh, it's going into the nitty gritty, if you wish. And uh, I'm going to keep uh, selected the element since uh, the class, uh, as you recall, it's going to apply this uh, animation to each and every element that has the exact same class. But uh, since this is a, a one-off animation, I don't really envision having this element repeated multiple times, either within this page or within other pages. I can simply say to Webflow, this animation is just for this specific element. Now we're going to want to add an animation when scrolled into view. And when scrolled out of view essentially means uh, this is going to be the animation once you scroll out of this view. So you're essentially scrolled below. So let's select uh, a start uh, a custom animation as these other ones are simply going to be the predefined uh, fixed animations that we saw in previous videos. And uh, we are going to create a new animation. Now, as uh, a reminder, over here you can find all of the different uh, animations and interactions that uh, you already added in within your website. So if uh, you need to quickly copy and uh, adjust uh, or actually apply the same animation that you previously applied, uh, you can simply do it from here so that you don't need to reinvent the wheel each and every time you're creating an animation in Webflow. In this case, again, we're going to create everything from scratch. So add a new animation and I'm going to write a cursor animation and I'm going to click on uh, enter, press enter. And now we're going to click on plus. Now, what I want this to do is to essentially move uh, around uh, as uh, the user lands on this website uh, or this, this web page. And I'm going to add a move, which is going to be set at zero and uh, 
0% uh, in X and Y axis. And uh, I just want to remind you that you are going to need to set uh, these to zero, even though you can see them uh, um, like that. Uh, uh, but this essentially is going to be a required uh, step. So just keep it in mind. Now, the next step uh, is probably wanted to move uh, right over here. So let's actually set that 600 pixels and I can play the animation to see how that looks. Now, <clears throat> this works uh, perfectly fine. One thing that uh, you can uh, organize though is going to be the duration and also what is going to be the type of uh, ease uh, that uh, you can apply to this. So for example, if I set it to bounce, you can see that uh, we now have, have a different type of uh, uh, animation and you can simply play around uh, and see which one is going to be the best uh, for your specific uh, um, desired result. So we can actually keep uh, easy in and out. Uh, we can make the duration probably even 0 07. Let's see, something like this where it's not too aggressive. And uh, I'm going to add uh, one more move which uh, is going to be right here. And then uh, let's move this uh, here below. So I can easily just uh, adjust this uh, and uh, we're going to make it is in and out. I'm going to use the duration of 0 0.7. And uh, you can also create a custom easing. Um, in this case, I'm simply going to utilize the predefined uh, value for the for the easing simply because it's uh, it's easier and it fulfills the uh, the job does uh, the job essentially but you can create uh, even you know more custom elements uh, and uh, we're going to essentially have a look uh, and uh, this this is quite fast uh, um, let's let's see if uh, I add for example a delay over here it's going to to be a little bit uh, so as you can see it's all about trial and error I really haven't uh, done this uh, prior to uh, filming this video so you're getting the the raw initial experimentations which I'm doing I'm probably going to have another element of uh, moving this uh, to say around here let's say around 650 and I'll move this a uh, little bit below let's say 600 again or actually maybe it's moving a little bit too far from uh, where I want it to, to be so I'm going to say 07 I'm going to make it uh, easy in and out uh, and um, yeah that's uh, much going to be uh, working uh, fine, uh, I would assume, uh, with uh, a delay applied to the other one, which uh, let's say 0 0.5, actually let's say 1 also at the start, so that it, it's not going to start immediately. So let's try and see how that how this works. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, we have uh, the delay that we need to apply also over here. So you can see how you can create uh, these uh, interactions and animations quite easily overall in Webflow. And uh, this uh, is going to essentially set uh, the initial state. Uh, so as you can see over here, setting initial state applies uh, styles to the element before page load. It's useful for hiding elements before animating them into view. So keep this in mind. And uh, again, this is going to be another dropdown that uh, you want to keep in mind because it's uh, essentially the same that you've seen in uh, the previous uh, menu before we created the custom animation. So if you want to apply to a specific class uh, or a selected element, uh, you can uh, easily do that. So for example, I can actually select this element uh, and then add uh, 
a variable over here or an interaction over here. So this is actually going to create uh, animations which are not going to be dependent of uh, just that one element uh, in the item uh, in and of itself. So overall, uh, this is going to make the animation work. Uh, there is uh, other things that you can uh, transform, of course, uh, apart from the movement. You can uh, scale it up, you can uh, rotate uh, this element, uh, you can skew it, so this should be fairly straightforward. Um, you can also change things uh, like the opacity. You can uh, uh, filter and uh, so font variations, which essentially means it's going to change the fonts, uh, background color, border color, text color, and also size uh, and uh, uh, miscellaneous things like hiding and uh, show. So there's quite a bit that you can do if you mix and merge uh, these uh, different uh, values. So my best recommendation now is to take a moment, try and replicate this uh, and uh, see if, if you get stuck, uh, you can always go back to this video and uh, reference it. Uh, and uh, then try and experiment with these other values. Uh, try and uh, make it so that you're going to have an element scale up or scale, or scale down within an interaction. Maybe rotate at the same time and uh, change the opacity just so that you can become familiar with the different transform and style options that you have available in Webflow when it comes to creating custom interactions. So I'll see you in the very next video. We're going to focus mainly on the page triggers. So as you can see, if we click on the plus, you're going to find all sorts of different element triggers right here which uh, are going to be the mouse click on tap, which uh, is going to be the trigger animation when an element is clicked, the mouse hover, which is a trigger animation when an element is hovered over, mouse move in a viewport, which uh, triggers animations based on the mouse moving across the screen, scrolling to view, which uh, triggers animation when an element comes into view as you scroll, and then the while scrolling in a view, which is going to be based on how far you scroll on the page. Now, I want to give you a real life example of how you can leverage both the element trigger and also the page triggers in a real life Webflow project. So we're actually going to go with the page trigger. And what we want to do is to make this headline move to the right as I scroll down the page. Now, in order to do this, we will need to leverage not the element trigger directly, but the page trigger, which is going to enable you to trigger by a change in the page's state. Now we're going to click on plus and we're going to click on while page is scrolling. Now, at this point, uh, you're going to see this menu. And at this point, uh, we're going to select uh, custom animation, play scroll animation. And uh, we're going to need uh, to add a new scroll animation. Now, once uh, you added uh, a scroll animation, uh, you're going to see it uh, over here. So you won't uh, need to do this process each and every single time since you can leverage these uh, predefined uh, animations which you already created. So this is going to save you tons of time. Now we're going to create a new animation. And as you can see, this menu is going to open up and we're going to um, write A to B laterally. And this is going to be the name of the animation. And you can utilize any naming convention that you prefer. Now you're going to notice that uh, as we have the uh, scroll animation, you're, you're going to see the 0% at the very top and uh, the very bottom is going to be 100%. Now this is going to show the height of the page as you're scrolling. So 0% is at the very top and 100% is at the very bottom of the page. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select this element, this H1, and uh, what uh, we're going to do, and by the way, actually, we can uh, even select uh, the entire header content so that you can see this uh, even better. So as you can see, you can easily change and swap these elements uh, selections on the go. 
and we're going to click on plus and we're going to set the very first variable which is going to be move as i click on move you're going to notice that now we have these two layers one on the top and one at the bottom this is going to essentially dictate how this component element is going to look like over here at the top and uh, this one is going to be how it looks like when we are scrolled uh, down at the very bottom. Now, we're going to uh, need uh, to adjust this uh, in a way so that uh, I don't need to reach the bottom to get to the end state because that's way too far and I already won't be able to see it uh, over here. So what we want to do is to bring this up just a little bit and uh, you're going to see with a live preview how this is going to make much more sense in just a moment. And I want to tell Webflow, hey, once I scroll down to 50%, I want this to move all the way to uh, the right. So I'm actually going to write 1000 pixels and uh, that, should, that should be fine. And uh, as you can see, the we have this error message, which essentially tells us, hey, you set up the uh, move to the right at 15%, but you haven't told me what is going on at 0%. And uh, you simply want to reiterate uh, that uh, you want it to be at zero pixels, and now the error message is gone. So if uh, we have a look at this first test, you're going to notice that as I scroll down, this element is going to scroll towards the right. Now, a very useful thing to keep in mind is you can actually have a live preview on, so you can you can see live how this works without uh, having to click on the play button. You can even see the exact percentage that uh, this is going to be affected. So say that I want to bring this up at 9%, I'll simply need to turn it back on and I can see this uh, new addition and uh, how it works. And this is going to save you so much time uh, when it comes to trial and error. For example, I want it uh, completely out uh, of view as I scroll down and uh, this is going to allow me to very briefly and, and quickly adjust this. Uh, so very easy, very simple. And uh, once we save, we're going to now have this uh, animation. So this is how you can apply trigger and uh, page uh, scrolling animations in a very fast and efficient way within Webflow.